Hello YouTubers. Well the next thing on my workbench is a leak delta turntable. I have no idea if it's working or not. Um, it's definitely very, very grubby. It's even got a an insect in there. Ugh. Anyway, first thing to do is sort that little lot out, test it, and see what we've got. Well, I've got some plugs um, temporarily uh, wired in, and uh, not turned it on yet. Let's see if this works. Well, it's very silent running. I don't hear any problems at all. I'm surprised. That's a mess. Um, there should be some uh, thread and a counterweight here. What have they done here? Let's see, they've moved the weights forward to give this some weight. Okay, well. Let's test it on that record. Oh my god, the state of that. Well, let's just turn that off. I'm willing to bet that, yeah, yeah, bit cleaner. And the needle. That looks serviceable. This is all very crude. Um, it doesn't make sure the thing works before I do any um, servicing to it. And the first candidate to be serviced is this, obviously. But let's see if this puts a signal out, shall we? Change hands with the camera. Uh, even that works. Okay. Before I do that, turn the volume down on that. Hmm. And on oh, speed. Well, I'm surprised. Um, the fundamentals work. The arm needs sorting, but the uh, motor, speed, that all seems to work. Obviously I'll open it up and see what it's like inside. All the linkages, all the motor, give it a good clean. But fundamentally this is this is okay. I don't know who had this turntable before me, but they seem to be a fan of butterflies and moths or live in an area where these things were flying around. But um other than that it looks like surprisingly clean. Still going to give it a once over though. Well, things are progressing. I've um, given it an initial clean. I've taken the base off, taken the platter off. Now I'm going to lubricate and service this area here. That includes the spindle, 
uh, the drive wheel, um, degrease all of this, lubricate that, all the linkages. So that's the next thing to do. And this is the underside of the turntable. As you can see I've given it a quick clean. Um, now I'm going to give it the same treatment as the top side, namely to lubricate everything, the motor, drive wheel, and the spindle already, all the linkages. So yeah, progress. And we're back. It's had its first um, initial clean, uh, both inside and out. Um, it's been serviced, everything's been lubed and oiled. So time to give you an overview of this unit. Although badged as a Leak Delta turntable, um, it's not actually an English turntable, it was made by a Swiss manufacturer. This has been rebadged. Um, it's actually a Goldring Lenko 75 or GL75 turntable. These were made back in the 70s and um, used an idler wheel uh, drive. As a result, uh, back in the 70s they were um, frowned upon by the hi-fi press. Idler drives were seen as an inferior uh, technology and belts were, were the thing way back then. However, the um, 75 was different to its competitors. Rather than the idler rub against the inside of the platter on the rim here, it ran directly under the platter. Um, and the platter itself is extremely heavy, um, I think 8 or 9 pounds, and the motor is cogless. So you don't get any of those problems typically associated with idler drive turntables. The other thing to note is it's a transcription turntable. And uh, that means the speed is infinitely variable between the two outermost presets. In fact, it goes a bit beyond that. I mean, that's a 78 setting there, it goes beyond. And that's a 16 there, it comes a bit below. So it's suitable to all sorts of people. Um, there were some old uh, records um, called Talking Books made on shellac. And uh, they would use the lower speed setting, 16. I mean, apart from the Gold Ring Lenko range, I don't think I've seen this speed setting on any other turntable. So this will play those. And conversely, I play 78s. Um, I've told a story recently, I don't know how true it is, but way back um, in the 60s and 70s, um, dancing schools would buy these. And depending on the speed of the record, if the target speed was, I don't know, 45, they come in at a lower setting and uh, practice dancing to that and very slowly get the speed up up to the target speed of 45 and uh, lastly um, older um, issues of records weren't always accurate so a 78 could be you know um, 82, 84, 76 so the fact you can hover this around that area very useful okay a bit about the internals about the motor first I think you can see behind the idler wheel, um, that's the motor. Modern turntables tend to use a DC motor, this is AC. Uh, in addition to that, it's cogless. Cogless uh, motors are particularly useful in idler drive turntables. Um, when a motor cogs, uh, that means the rotation of the spindle when it goes past the magnets goes through a momentary um, hesitation and that hesitation will manifest as a yeah, a jerky rotation. Hardly noticeable, but in turntables very noticeable. If the um, motor is cogless, um, the spindle spins without any of that hesitation going on. So it's very smooth as it goes round, and that transfers through the idler wheel and into the platter. So if the source has no hesitations, the platter um, spins much smoother. Um, like I said, very important in idler wheel turntables. Um, the business end from above. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's the tapered drive shaft and the idle drive 
can be set at any position along that taper. That's what lends it to having um, infinite speed adjustments between the two endpoints. Very elegant solution. The um, brake is present here and is operated off the off on control. Um, some turntables don't have a brake, but because the plateau is so heavy on this, um, really you need one. And uh, even with the brake, it takes a while to stop. It's not instant by any means. One more thing about the um, speed adjustment: the indentations. Uh, exactly that. There is an indentation between two endpoints. So if I put that speed adjustment lever in there, it cannot go left and right, it's locked into place. Um, each indentation has a screw, and if you um, untighten the screw, the indentation can be moved left and right, so you can fine-tune the speed and get it spot on. How do you do that? Well, um, there's a strobe disc, but yay big, and you rest in the middle of the platter. Select the desired speed have the appropriate light source and you'll say for example you wanted the 45 you slacken that, move the indentation with that on top and the strobe will line up with the flickering light and you know you've got the right speed and take that off very carefully tighten that up go back check and you know you've got that particular one spot on and you repeat for all four very useful my Swiss engineering. And uh, a bit about the platter. This is a weighty item. Um, as I mentioned before, eight, nine pounds. Uh, if you can see there, you have some holes drilled into the rim. Four in this one. Uh, much the same way you get your wheels balanced on a car uh, to avoid any um, oscillation when it turns. This has the same thing done to it. But rather than adding weights, the remove weights until the item until the um, platter spins uh, perfectly well we're getting there and the last thing to look at I think is the tone arm considered by some to be the weakest part um, of the design and uh, I'm among those people I'm not keen on it um, it has a straight arm and there's arguments for and against that and it's not the problem it has a weight set up at the back here with a coarse adjusting weight and a fine adjustment weight and an anti-skate weight here which as you can see is missing so we've done a temporary thing with this and some thread um, I've quickly um, balanced it, it's not perfect but it'll do for this um, so what's the problem with it? well in here they have um, V-blocks which is really just um, a V-shaped wedge where the tone arm rests rather than an enclosed pivot assembly. Um, I find that um, a right pain to get spot on. Um, some people are the same as me. Some say, oh no, just replace them and get new ones and you'll be fine. I've done that and I've never been perfectly happy with the setup. Um, the good thing is these can be taken out and replaced. Um, due to the whole positioning here the retrofit tone arms um, aren't huge in range but there are some from the top of my head I can't remember what they include but you can definitely get much better than this um, to sort that problem out I actually took out another GL75 I have in stock and wouldn't you know it it has the same weight missing <laughs> which is just typical and that's it finished um, not completely there's a few small tweaks to be done but 95% uh, there um, this one I was going to sell but the one I have uh, in stock um, I was going to keep for myself but I think this is better this has this nice aluminium trim um, the plinth is more substantial and I much prefer the lid in this one. Yeah, the other one's just got a um, 
perspex lid and this is much better so yeah keeping this for myself what I'll do to it um, eventually is replace this the tone arm I research what the um, suitable replacements are I think Decker do one I'm not too sure and I'll fit one of those but anyway enough of me waffling let's give you a quick demo it's riding home sung by Liz Allen is rubbish not my sort of thing at all but I doubt it's copyrighted and uh, let's just see the thing up and running riding home. and it works the sissy pops cracks but that's the record not the turntable yep so it works well, I think that's enough of that um, one thing I should point out before I go um, when I make a YouTube video I always do um, some research I don't go overboard but if I'm going to make a video I want to get the key facts and figures correct and um, there's a video on YouTube. Well, in fact, there's quite a few videos on YouTube about um, Goldring Lenko 75 turntables. But there's a particularly useful one by um, Sparky Projects. Um, I'll put his link in the description and I'll add a link to that particular video that was particularly useful to me. Um, I've just mentioned the um, core basic um, features which are um, intrinsic to the this range of turntables. He goes into more detail. So look for his link in my description below and um, have a look at his video. Much more informative than mine. Anyway, uh, until next time, bye for now. One last glamour shot. It's a handsome looking thing. Just got to change that tone arm and the music.